suppose now is as good a time as any to make my first video about the Electrodocus uh, DMPPT450. First off, I gotta wonder about the pronunciation of, everybody calls it Electrodocus, but the guy who makes them, his name is, I think it's Dacian. So if that, if he means that to uh, the name to sound like his name, then that would mean it's pronounced Electrodacious. Kind of like Electrobodacious. I don't know why I just said that. Anyhow, the f intent of this is to sort of document what um, process I'm going through trying to set this thing up. Um, the DMPPT450 is, it really only has one purpose, and that's to um, transfer, uh, transition solar panel electricity to heat, directly into heat via resistive elements. And it's a very large unit, uh, very heavy duty. There's a huge aluminum um, heat sink on the back there. And I have to make a, uh, definitely have to make a, a finned heat plate or heat conversion uh, back there. What do they call those things? Thermal, thermal management? I'm going to get ripped for that. But anyways, um, on CPUs, it's the cooler, right? So I'm considering making a big liquid-cooled one uh, for this thing. It, we'll see. Um, what I have going on so far is, uh, if you look at Dacian's um, website, he's got the uh, manuals for all these things on there. But what he recommends doing, what he did on his house, I should say, is he used um, coils of wire in his floor, um, wrapped around in his floor before they poured the uh, the slab. And basically, I'm emulating that, except instead of using um, the slab heating, what I'm going to do is put it inside a tank. And I already have some other elements added, uh, water heater elements. I'm waiting for one more to arrive from China, but. Uh, I have six on the bottom, and there's going to be five on the side. Uh, those are 36 volt, 1200 watt elements each, and uh, well, each unit is is that much, and they split down into. Uh, you can divide them out to make 600 watt elements if you separate those buses there, and that'll have to be done at least for one of them. Because as those are uh, paralleled, it's one ohm. And when they're bussed together, they're, um, I'm sorry, they're two ohms without being bussed together. And when they're bussed together in parallel, then there's one ohm of resistance. And I'm using that to create the correct amount of resistance on the Electrodocus DM PPT450. And then I used um, this wire to, it's 18 gauge stranded wire, uh, and I made loops. 235 feet long, which is equivalent to Dacian's, um, I forget how many of that meters that transition to. He, was, he uses meters and we use freedom units. So each one of these loops is now one and a half ohms, and I did test it. it they test exactly at that, so um, all of this should come together quite nicely. I did a little bit of math on this, and I, let's see here, here's my notes. <clears throat> That's pretty much how I'm going to have to wire things up to, uh, to get the correct amount of resistance. Each loop will be dissipating approximately 500 watts uh, when I have all of the uh, elements hooked up properly and uh, full sun on I have I'm going to use the same amount that Dacian recommends 39 panels but I do have 40 I think 41 available um, if I I don't know if I can add those extra two in there or not the way this thing works is MPPT is called maximum power point tracking and <clears throat> a lot of solar controllers use that technology. I have two of these uh, little grid tie limiting inverters up here, one for each uh, leg of the power coming into my shop. And the way MPPT works is 
uh, it takes the power point of a solar panel and tracks it and makes it as efficient as possible. Uh, so it basically varies the, if I'm understanding correctly, it varies the resistance to make the uh, power point, the maximum power point on the arc of peak power production track that. So, and it does it all with solid state electronics. Well, what Dacian has done is he takes that and instead of using um, solid state electronics to do that, what he's doing is he's doing it virtually where you can turn on or off elements and reroute the power to simulate a uh, MPPT signal. So it's not really MPPT, but it's sort of simulating it with um, solid state relays and things like that on his device here. So it's it is some fascinating stuff. I just uh, I love thinking about this stuff and love um, working with it. It's just it blows my mind. There's no moving parts in here, so. If I don't blow it up and let the smoke out or anything like that, this should last an extremely long time. And that's kind of the point is that um, the way he's got that set up, there's nothing to go bad. There's no capacitors. There's no, um, there's nothing in here that, uh, you know, normally in electronics that deal with power and heat, it's the, uh, the capacitors that eventually blow out. And Dacian does a good job of explaining that in his videos. And uh, so what I'm going to do, the plan is I'm going to take these loops and use these fiberglass poles. Uh, I'm going to stack the stack these up in order along these poles, and there's going to be four loops per uh, on TLD1, TLD4, and TLD6. Each get four loops in parallel, which gives it a total resistance of 0.375 ohms, um, and each one of those coils should be dissipating 500 watts at that point. Um, so, yeah, look at that. You can take 100 amps of at about 30 volts, each one of these outputs. The other outputs, the, the 50 amp outputs, 2, 3, um, and 5 are going to be for those elements which are you know these are the main elements those are going to put out the most amount of power these are kind of the ones that allow you to make those virtual power points um, mppt power points and so uh yeah it should work out real nice i'm, I'm assuming this thing is this bucket's going to heat up incredibly fast so this is just the main bucket and then i'm going to set up a uh, a series of these barrels to uh, with a thermal si siphon system to uh, dissipate the heat out over a bunch of barrels, which I have in here. And those are all going to be um, seriesed out. And by the time all those are heated up, that should be a, a fair amount of heat storage space uh, and mass capacity. So I'm not heating my floor, I'm heating the water. Uh, and if it works out well, I might take those uh, coils out, take them into the house, lay them out in a grid pattern, and then pour a, uh, a layer of top coat over the, uh, you know, float a layer of top coat uh, leveling compound or something like that in my basement and hook them up that way. Uh, but we'll see. This is all just a big experiment. All right, we just lit up the uh, the Electrodocus um, DMPPT450 here. There's only one output on um, TLD3. And I have all the panels hooked up. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be or not, but that's how many panels there are. And the only element that's doing anything is that third one from the bottom. You can, it's kind of neat. It's, it's hot. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is plenty hot. You can see the shimmer come off of it. I don't know if that's the only one that's supposed to be on or, or what. All right, here's a DMPPT450 running. Um, TLD2 and TLD5 are both on now. All inputs are active. 
and uh, I just made that last video. TLD2 and TLD5 are active, and then I just wanted to show it's leaking a little bit, but um, so far today it's about three something and three almost four in the afternoon. It's heated up enough water. Uh, I mean, it's about bath temperature water, so like 50 gallons of water up to bath temperature. So the bottom line of this Electrodacus test, uh, Dacian got back to me. Um, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's just that in the Atlanta sun, with them laying flat on the ground like that, they're really, really hot. And they're not going to be very efficient at putting out power in the range that this thing is intended to work at. Um, it's made to work in very cold temperatures in the winter time to make the most heat because you don't need it in the summertime, which makes perfect sense. All it means is I just did all this uh, for nothing, and I'm going to have to wait to do another test uh, when it gets cold in the winter. Bummer.